Good afternoon. Well, it's afternoon for me. So um, I'm based in the UK, so it's three o'clock for me. I think uh, if you're in America, majority of you, it's around about 10 o'clock in the morning. Um, my name's Nikki. I'm from Gracie's house and I'm part of the European content creator team for Dixie Bell. Um, so um, yeah, so I'm here in, in Europe, in, in um, the UK. Um, so today uh, I'm going to show you it's quite a basic um, finish I'm going to show you today. Um, I've got this fantastic, heavy, solid oak coffee table. It's so heavy, I can't even lift it. Just this little piece on my own um, without help. So I've popped it on some wheels so it's easy for me to show you what I'm doing. Um, so the finish that we've got to begin with is this kind of yellowed, slightly, um, you know, it's been, it's been worn by some time where it's been, been used. Um, and it's just it's just got darker. The wood's got darker, so I've given it a really really good clean. Now in the UK here, um, we can't get white lightning by Dixie Bell, so I use um, a product called Elbow Grease, which is a little bit like a sugar soap, but it's fantastic for stripping any greases, any polish off. Um, give it a really really good scrub and a and a rinse and. On a lot of finishes that's it you're good to go this piece didn't need sanding the top i have sanded um, there was some some staining and some stuff that mostly came out but i wanted to sand this back because i'm gonna use um the no pain gel stain but i'm going in pickling white but i'm gonna wipe it back <clears throat> excuse me i'm gonna wipe it back so i wanted to sand it back to bare wood um, because i'm gonna wipe it back you can use it over existing finishes and leave it on and not have to wipe it back. But personally for this piece, I just wanted to um, go for the wipe back. So we'll do that in a sec. Hi Jodie, oh thank goodness, I've got some comments. I wasn't sure, <laughs> how are you doing? So, um, as I said, I've given it a good clean. I have started because you don't wanna see me paint the whole thing. So I have made a start, but I wanted to show you, this is what we're starting off with. After a good clean, um, I'm changing the handles. So I don't know if anyone saw the picture that I posted. Um, but it had just silver, um, like brushed steel bar handles. Um, so I filled the holes with Dixie Bell mud. I've used white, just because it's quite a pale colour that I'm going to be going over the top with. These are the lovely handles that I'm going to replace with. So that's going to be my new handle. So this kind of, this kind of style for me, it fits into a, a range of... Um, categories because it's it can be beachy in a beachy setting it can be quite farmhouse cottages it works for but it's that very sort I'm looking for a very pale washed out look so it's a very simple one color technique we're going for and that's it and then as I said we're going to stain the top so I've also taped off um, around here as you can see the yellow tape there I'm going to be painting today Jodie in driftwood so it's the palest of the greys that Dixie Bell cover. Um, so as you, as you can see, so this is just one coat here. Um, it, the coverage is pretty good, but I will just go over it with a really light um, second coat. Um, I'm using a Dixie Bell Mini today. Um, these have just arrived. I'm very excited. I tried it the other day and it's really great. And the other, I mean, not only does it put the paint on lovely, but it fits in this gap. So I was really struggling. A lot of my other brushes have got, um, Hi Nikki, fab name, it's a brilliant name. A lot of my other brushes are, are longer handled. This was great for getting into the, to the little nooks and crannies that a bigger brush can't get into. So I'm loving the Dixie Bell Mini at the moment, so we're gonna be sticking with that. Um, so I'm gonna get cracking. Um, I'm gonna do this bit, do this trim around here. I'll do a little bit of the second coat and then we'll crack on and, and hopefully get some of the top stained as well, or we'll at least give the top of one coat of stain. So if there's any questions anyone's got, or if you want to let me know where you're watching from, if I do miss a question, um, Jodie, the mini's brilliant, isn't it? If I do miss a question, I will pop back on, I'll monitor everything, and I'll answer anything that I miss as, as I'm going through. So I do like this driftwood colour. It's really, really pretty for a grey. Um, and especially for this beachy sort of washed out, just faded, pale, nice, nice look that I'm going for on this piece. Uh, 
and ha I don't know if you can hear the rain in the background. It's been raining all day for me. I, um, I spent half an hour earlier running around in the rain because we had wa water dripping in our flat roof. So just as I was eating my lunch, water started dripping onto the back of my hand. So then we had to try and find a tarpaulin and a ladder to get up onto the flat roof. The things that we have to do. So as you can see, that's just one, that's just one coat and it really does go on really, really well. Um, I have got my spray bottle with me. I don't tend to, um, Jodie, I tend not to use too much water on the first coat. It depends how it goes on. But for this, I haven't needed to. For the second coat, I always missed. Um, I just find that the coverage is a, is a bit better if I don't use too much water to begin with. But again, it's kind of project by project. I, um, I kind of make my decisions as I go along and the piece kind of helps me make that decision. And I think if you've got a plan and you feel like you have to stick to it, not everything works out that way when it comes to redoing furniture. So, um... so I, tape, I tape my edges off on the inside just so that when you do open a drawer, it gives you a nice clean line and it looks more professional finish. Um, some pieces you don't need to because you can't see the insides. But I think with these, I didn't want to chance it with these drawers. And luckily this piece wasn't waxed either. So, um, so I didn't have, it was, it was really was, this was a minimal, minimal prep piece. get those corners so I'm actually sat in front of my staging wall because um, it's the tidiest part of my workshop the floor looks hideous otherwise but don't worry paint comes off it really well it's the only part of my workshop that I actually clean the floor off everything else just gets splattered and dripped I'm actually going to use a bit of water at the top. So Jodie just now was asking about water. It can help your paint go on, on smoother. This is, because this is quite a modern piece, it's got, um, hi from Iowa. Hi, hi, uh, Marianne. I hope I've said that right, Marianne. Um, this is quite a modern piece, so it's, you know, there really isn't flaws to the finish. But water will, using the mister, don't use, always try and get um, a Mr. Bottle. You can get them from Dixie Bell. I've got a feeling at the moment they're, they're not in stock, but you can go online and um, there's usually a little a thing at the bottom to say when you've run out of stock, uh, when you, please let me know when you're back in stock and you'll get an email and you can put your email address in there. Um, but you can get them, I think hairdressers use the same kind of stuff. Don't use a normal spray bottle because it will splatter and it will give you blobs of water rather than a fine mist. Mm -hmm. What's Jodie said? Yeah, yeah, I think, you know, we're creative. We don't clean up after ourselves. <laughs> right, I'm going to... Just to, I'm actually going to show you something else. I, I do two things. In between coats occasionally. Um, oh, you can get it from a stockist. Thank you, Jodie. Yes, you can get it from a stockist, of course, if you've got a local one to you. Um, there's two ways to do. If you, if you feel like you just need to knock back a bit of the, the dryness and the sandiness, or if you've got any little pieces that you can feel in it. Um, I've got these. Um, they're, like, they're like big scrubbies. I can't even remember where I got them from. But I also got these really, really ultra fine sanding pads. And literally, it's not, you're not sanding. It literally, that's all I do. I go over like that. Look, it's not, see, it's not taking anything really. But it just smooths out any little small imperfections that there might be. And I'm going to give it a bit of a mist in there. And the bottle keeps going. 
because as I said, I only find the second coat, you really don't need, um, you really don't need too much of, um, you don't need as much paint for the second coat. And you see it, you literally just really do a rough brush over. And because the water's there, it goes on really smooth. It fills in any any bits, any small pieces that you might have missed off on the first coat. I won't go right to the back because it's really just to show you. I'm going to I'm going to do down there because at the moment you can see there's a lot of grain that I can see here. So I'm just going to fill those. Because they didn't get caught on the first pass, the first coat. Okay. Hi Zoe, how are you? Have you fixed that piece, that, that disastrous piece that you had in yesterday? Have you done it already or did you just burn it? Okay. I'm just going to pop another. So this is the second coat down on the bottom shelf here and on that bottom rung. So I don't know how much the camera's picking up with. You can see that just the little bits of the grain that aren't quite... Let me just move it over a little bit. The little bits of the grain that aren't quite being covered on that first coat, but you can go in afterwards in the second coat and just fill in any little gaps that you may have missed. There we go. See, this is this is this is it. So there was no primer on this. This is two coats and it's done. And it's you know, as I said, it's the palest grey. Um, in the, the range and um, two coats, it's brilliant the coverage is fantastic back over here and it dries so well I mean I, I prepped and did the first coat um, so I see the pickling gel stain I haven't actually used the pickling white so I'm hoping it's going to turn out as I'm in my head it's going to look great um, I've seen other people use it, and I've seen, but um, I've not actually used it myself, so. Full disclaimer, there we go. Um, I've lost my track of thought there now. Can't remember what I was gonna say. Oh, I was saying drying time. I prepped this yesterday, just because, like I said, you don't wanna see me paint the whole coffee table. It's one color, it's boring, in as much as you don't need to see how to paint one color on a whole piece of furniture. But, um, you know, you can, you can do this and, and come back half an hour later and you can do your second coat. It's so, so simple, easy to work with. Okay. okay. Right, okay, I'm going to pause that there. Struggling with the gel stain. Felicia, you're struggling with the gel stain. Um, are you in a particularly hot place? Because if it's humid, it will take much longer to dry. I'm assuming you mean if you're going over an existing finish, because if you wipe back, the dry time is significantly less. Um, yet it's, I would imagine it's probably due to humidity, but you're also, you may be better off doing a thinner coat or a two or three thinner coats than trying to put on one thick coat. Um, I did a top recently and I did two coats on it, but I, I left it a day or so in between to make sure it's properly dry, but it did dry in the, the time. If you're in America, I know there's some really, really humid um, states right now, and that will prolong the dry time. But to counteract that, if you use thinner coats, that should help you. So I hope I hope that can um, put your mind at ease. Okay, I'm gonna pop open. So as we said at the beginning, I'm using the pickling white gel stain. Uh, anyone, has anyone used this gel stain before? Anyone else? Um, the gel stain in general. If you've not seen it before, this is the pickling white one. Here we go. But it's like the consistency is 
it's really strange, like old-fashioned blancmange or trifle. Um, I personally, some people use a sponge brush to apply it. Some people use the, um, I've got one here, so let me just reach over. Some people like the applicator pads. My personal preference, so really you've just got to work and find something that you're comfortable with. Uh, and just something that you, um, you know, you have to try these things out. What works for one person is not going to work for another. And how you, how you work, don't feel you have to do something the way everyone does. Because a lot of people will be using the, the applicator pads. And I do like them, but for this, I'm just going to use a chip brush. And actually, because I do quite a lot of pine prep, I have white spirit knocking about. So I don't even chuck my chip brushes away because I reuse them. So I clean it out with white spirit. So we're going to get on with this. Okay. And do you know what I've just realised? I've got a kitchen towel out ready earlier. And it's the one thing that I've not managed to bring down to the workshop. I've left it on my kitchen table. So that's quite annoying. So I've got some workshop rags. I'll just have to use one of those. So I chose white because I didn't want, I want to get, like I said at the beginning, I didn't want to go, I wanted to go like a real washed out, almost, I mean the paint's called driftwood. I sort of wanted that effect. And I felt like if I used the grey, it might just be a bit too dull having grey and grey. And another reason I'm wiping this back is because I didn't want the solid colour. I could just paint it. For this particular piece, I wanted it to tone down the oak and give it like a, an aged, worn sort of look. Marianne, yes, I did. On this particular piece, because I'm going to wipe it back, I sanded it back to bare wood. Um... So I want it to take, I'm not going to leave it to sit on it, so I'm just going to wipe back that bit that I've done there, let me just grab a rag. Yes, one of my clients, when I was dropping a piece back, she said, oh I've got this, this bedding, do you want it? I thought you might need it for rags, so I have, I've brought it back and it's all, all nice white cotton bedding and she's given it to me to use as a rag. That see, that's exactly the look I wanted. I might just, once I've just wiped all this back, I'll move the camera a bit closer so you can see it close up. In fact, what I'll do is I'll leave a patch that I haven't wiped back. So let me just, if I can do this. Oops. So, I don't know how well you can... No, you can't see that at all. See, that's the bit where I've wiped it back. And you can see the difference on the bit that I haven't wiped back. Let's just run down there. So it's giving it a real sort of soft... A soft, washed-out look. And because it's a natural wood, obviously you'll have parts that take it more than others but I kind of wanted that and it's sitting in the grain really really nicely so I shall just keep going with that if that's okay with everybody it's pretty isn't it can you reuse you can you reuse your brush after using the gel stain I've always wiped it on yes I use these chip brushes um Janelle but I just rinse them out with some white spirit after I've used it um, Felicia, do you have to wipe it back? No, you don't have to wipe it back. I'm chosen to wipe this one back because I wanted that sort of driftwood effect. Um, if you, the drying time will be a little bit longer if you don't wipe it back, but you can leave it on as a solid, much more opaque finish. Um, if I don't catch any of your questions, if I miss them as I go along, I will come back and answer them. So don't think I've ignored you or missed you. I will come back afterwards. But it's so easy to apply. I mean, you can see, it's a chip brush. How easy is that going on? It's sitting in the grain really nicely because oak can have some, you know, dark stain will do the same on oak. 
I'm really, really pleased how that's coming out. So when I said I didn't want to use the grey, I just felt like the grey would make it a little bit too dull for this project. And I wanted the white, faded white look to just lift it a little bit. So it's, you know, at the end of the day, apart from a little bit of prep, this is a two product two product project um, Marianne yeah it's it's brilliant and there's um I'm sure you're familiar so there's pickling white which is this one um, there's I think it's weathered gray there's a black walnut which is a lovely lovely warm brown and then espresso which is a very dark brown um, I haven't used the black yet I've used the espresso and the walnut. Walnut's probably going to be my most used colour, although I'm quite liking this, so this might now be my favourite. <laughs> my new favourite. I have got the grey. I've not used the grey yet. I mean, this look can be achieved with, um, with paint as well. If you watered down your paint, Hi Sarah, Malaga. Lovely, what's your weather? Are you really nice there? Um, yeah, so you can achieve this whitewash look. You could use white wax. You could use um, watered down white paint. So you could use fluff, would be quite good. would give you quite a nice effect, I would imagine. Um, I, do, I do like the finish this, the no paint gel stain gives. You could also use the, my wheels are what, moving towards you. You could also use the Voodoo Gel Stain, but because it's water-based, it does it's more translucent, so you'd, you'd probably have to do more coats of that to build up to a similar finish to this. So I'm just going to pick the camera up again and show you how we're getting on. I don't, I'm trying to get it out without the shadow as well, the shadow of the... So there's some really nice grain and it's picking up lovely. Hi Jackie, how are you? Uh, what have we got there? Which is about, hang on, I'm just, I do not have to worry about bleed through with white stain, especially when sealing after. I have a pine dresser that I like to whitewash. Yes, now to be fair, yeah, if you were doing pine and you had knots, um, you obviously can't seal the knots how you normally would do. You, you, the, your best thing would be to use clear um, boss. Sorry, I'm getting really hot in here. Your best thing would be to use clear boss, I would say. Um, because obviously if you use anything that's white, you're gonna see those if you're, if you're patching the knots. Try clear boss and then the finish that you want. Um, but even having said that, it might still take differently you might be better off having a little, doing a little test board on some pine um, and seeing what will give you the results because what I wouldn't want to advise is that you use the clear boss and then that affects how the stain takes differently so it would still look patchy. I think you should do a test board. Get some pine and just do a test board on that. Oh, have I missed anything else? Hi, the last question, is it paint or, or wax? This is the no pain gel stain in pickling white but i was just saying that you could you could create this effect with wax um, or a watered down paint to give yourself a whitewash i was just really keen to try i've used the gel the, the no pain gel stain in the two round colors walnut and espresso and i was just really keen to try the white um, and i thought it would give the perfect effect for this coffee table that I'm trying to achieve. And I'm really, really pleased with it. So I'm looking, I'm kind of looking along those farmhouse, beachy, it kind of fits in a number of categories, I think.
Jackie, yeah, so that was your plan. Good. I'm glad I'm with everybody. <laughs> And of course, if this, you know, if you want to, um, if this isn't thick enough for you when you wipe back, you just wait for it to dry and do another, do, you know, wait overnight is probably best. And do another coat, because you'll still get that washed look, but you'll just get a little bit more density to the colour. into the grain so I'm just going to go back over so I should have what I should have done before I came on I should have um, done the draw fronts but just to remind you anyone that didn't catch me at the beginning we filled in so there's two drawers and we're going to use these little like card catalog handles No, I don't paint the whole piece with a chip brush, Sarah. Um, I'm just using this for the stain because if I do need to chuck the brush out, it's not too much of a problem. For the rest of the piece, this particular piece, I've used a, a mini, Dixie Bell mini. Brilliant, it puts the paint on nicely, but it also gets in to these bits when you've got to do here. All my other brushes were too long. I couldn't get it and it kept not banging. It was very annoying. So um, no, chip brush I use for wax and I use for stains and that's it but I do reuse my chip brushes so I'm not um, so these ones with the plastic handles that if you just soak them once using this kind of product if you just soak them in um, white spirit they're reusable you know, you don't have to think about chucking everything away if you're on a budget. I forgot to put, I even got the gloves out ready, forgot to put the gloves on. You need gloves when you're using this stain. It's oil-based, it will stain your hands. <laughs> At least it's white and it's not dark brown or black. Okay, so I'm hoping that's given you some confidence to maybe try a project like this and um, and you've seen how effective and how quickly you can achieve a different look, a very different look. And anyone who missed the beginning of the um, video, you'll see what the finish used to look like. Curious, will you brush on a top coat or do you spray on the open shelves? I'll brush it on, um, I'll brush a top coat on this, on the, on the top of this once this is you need to wait on no paint gel stain if you're going to top coat. You need to wait a good three days. And as we were talking about um, humidity, you need to really make sure that that's dry before you do any kind of top coat. I tend not, I, I don't really get involved with spraying top coats. I use a brush for all of mine. Um, and the Dixie Bell top coats give such a great finish. Um, you can, obviously you can spray them if that's your preference, but... I personally find it goes on fine with the brush. So, okay, I think we're pretty much at the end. I really, really appreciate you all coming on to watch. Um, it's, you know, it's raining, but gosh, it's hot. <laughs> um, and I hope I've inspired uh, you to maybe try something like this in the future. Thanks ever so much for watching, guys. Thank you. Bye.